And welcome back to Tropico again. I'll tell you what, I'll give credit to Microsoft for one thing. Their, uh, their, their game DVR, yeah, yeah, I know, just five years. Their game DVR puts a little something up here that tells you that you're recording and how long you've been recording. So you know it's working. OBS, there's nothing up there. So, I don't know if I'm recording or not. I didn't realize I wasn't recording the first time I played this. So, <laughs> bummer. So we're doing it again. And I'm going to, while I'm thinking about it, because... there's too many shacks up here around that. So we're going to build that to get something going there. We're not going to start on this yet. And it's like, ugh. There are, in fact, three. There are 24 people working on building stuff in this game. And it still takes them forever to do this. Basically, what they're doing now is they're flattening the, the land out before they can do anything. And it's still going to take them a long time to do it. It's annoying. What can I say? Uh, I'm thinking some of this stuff I should have just done a long time ago. <laughs> It would have been better off for everything, I think, but... Oh well, with just five years to go, it's too late to think about that now. Alright, so... Yeah, like I said, that, uh... That boat doesn't look quite right to me. There's like too much on it. But then again, to be honest, it's just... I mean, you've got a flybridge here that's fully enclosed. And this just looks like... I, I don't know what it is. I know, I'm acting like I know everything there is to know about boats, but... <laughs> See, the, the, the truth is, is I would really like to own a boat. One of these boats. A bigger boat. I, I never will. Because... <laughs> See, I, I watch all these videos about canal boats, and people actually live on these things and just go up and down and back and forth and all around England. And they're little mobile boat homes. You know, like people do in our country with mobile homes and RVs. But, you see, the, the kicker of it is, it's like... Boats like this... frequently have two engines in them. Not always, but at this size, it's usually two engines, and they're usually two very big diesel engines. Presidente, I believe some of your people may be calling for an election next year. Oh, how exciting. But, you know, when you're only going, I mean, you, you go maybe 25 miles an hour with the boat, Now that looks unusual. Ah, is that the tour boat? 
I must be the tour boat. But as I was saying, you know, they go 25 miles an hour. And maybe you get... Well, if you go 25 miles an hour, let's say you go 25 miles an hour and your engines burn five gallons of diesel fuel per hour. That's... Man. That, that's... Five miles to the gallon. And trust me, they don't usually do that good. And the big... The, the big travely adventure thing to do with a boat is called running the Great Loop. Um, see, we're very close and close, but they're the same thing. Yeah, well, running the Great Loop, you go down the mist. Well, say you start at Chicago. You go, you take the canals that lead to the Illinois River. And then you go down the Illinois River to the Mississippi. And then, when you hit the Mississippi, you got two choices. You can take the Mississippi all the way down to um, New Orleans, which seems like the most logical thing to do. But you got to remember that the Mississippi is mostly used for commercial barge traffic. It doesn't have a lot of stuff set up for smaller boats. So sometimes finding fuel, if say you're running um, gasoline powered boats, you may not be able to find a place to refill with gasoline. So usually what happens is, is they take, you take the Mississippi down to Cairo and yes, in Illinois, we call the city that's spelled C-A-I-R-O, Cairo, not Cairo. We're not in Egypt. But anyways, when you get to Cairo, you go back up the Ohio River until it meets the Tennessee River. Then you go up the Tennessee River till you reach, um, there's a big canal that basically it, it's they call it the Ten Tom Canal because what it does is it connects the Tennessee River with the Tom Big Bow River and I, I have no idea if I'm even pronouncing that right because it's kind of an unusual name oh it sounds like somebody just died what a shame but anyways you get on the, the Tom Big Boy Tim Big Bow River and you can take it down through Alabama to uh, the city on the coast there <laughs> and then once you get there you're in the Gulf of Mexico and you go down and you head around you loop down around the bottom of Florida you come back up the East Coast you usually stick with the intercoastal waterway which is between the actual coast of the mainland and a series of islands that naturally occurred a little ways out. Um, when I was at field med school, I went with a bunch of Marines to Emerald Isle, which basically it was just a big fishing. That's what they did. They fished. They ran fishing boats out for people, and you stayed there. You'd go out for a day on the fishing boats. Not they're, they aren't commercial fishing boats. They're they're these things. So. But you go up that until you get to New York, and then you head up the Hudson River, and you work your way to the Erie Canal. And then you take the Erie Canal, you can take it up through, you can take another route up through Canada, or you can stay in the United States. And you go around until you hit the Great Lakes, you loop around Michigan, and you come back down to Chicago, and you've done the Great Loop. It's like 6,000 miles. So, like I said, you're paying out a ton of money for fuel. And I mean, you know, you're traveling 25, 30 miles an hour tops. It takes a long time to do it, too. But 
that in. See, I don't... And I don't live near navigable waters anyway. So the kind of boat I would want would be a... Um, oh. Alright. Oh, that looks okay. I, w I would like to have a Sea Ray Sundancer 280. It is large enough to comfortably hold a number of people. Um, it's like a big, it's like a medium-sized camper, actually. Um, get it outfitted with a pair of 4.3 liter Mercruiser V6 engines on Bravo 3 outdrives. Yeah, I know, it's just word salad. But it's a big enough boat that you've got room to be comfortable on it. It's small enough that you can put it on a trailer and take it from your landlocked area here down the highway to the next landlocked area. I mean, our tourist des destination of choice over the years has been... How old is Osvaldo? 13. Okay, well, that's... See? It's, see, it's, it's all kids. I don't know if that other one is still there. See, because there was... Okay, I guess it's just the two of them. The other one's gone. But, um... For as fun and interesting as... Um... Branson is. And, you know, it's near the uh, Lake of the Ozarks. It's right there where um, Table Rock Lake is. Table Rock Lake is big, but it's landlocked. It's got this great big huge dam, but there's no locks to get you from Table Rock Lake down to the smaller lake that runs alongside um, Branson and where the uh, touristy area is. So, you know, if you want to go someplace else, if you want to go from Table Rock Lake to Lake of the Ozarks, you got to put your boat on a trailer and haul it over there. The uh, Branson Bell River boat, they actually had to build in Branson because there was no way to get it there. So they actually built a shipyard in Branson. They built the ship, launched it. It has never been out of Table Rock Lake. And it never will be because it's far too big to... You now, the only way you can do it is tear it apart, haul it away, and then put it back together again. So... But, now that I've wasted this much time... See, I've wasted all this time talking about boats that I'll never own, and they still aren't... Oh, they're actually building on it now. You see the little bits of yellow going on. So, this may be finished by the end of the game. And we can watch the amusing behavior of the uh, airplanes that come in. Okay, our apartment has filled up here. That's good. This apartment is filled up. Good. This apartment is filled up. Good. We have some space available here in the tenement. We have some space available there in the tenement. So when these boys grow up... Yeah, I think once they hit, like, 15, they'll, uh... actually take the take their they will assume their adult form and once they start working then they'll move into one of the apartments or the tenements she's 10 you got like two years kids and then your parents are going to kick you out <laughs> oh that sounds so silly Okay, we've got some there, nothing there, we've got some there, nothing there, this of course is full. 
Okay. Are we done yet? Almost. Finally. Um, or some of the things I mentioned before. Oh yeah, by the time this is out, the uh, Fallout, or it's Fallout. <laughs> the Tropico 5 tutorial run will be posted. I've scheduled it the same time as the penultimate episode of Tropico, the one before this. This is the last one, the penultimate one is the one before that. You'll get about 80% of the vote. Oh, it was only 75% the first time I played this through. So that's good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that will be there. And I think I'm not going to play that. I'm still trying to get the hang of it. Um, I tell you, it, it's all kind of weird. They just added more and more stuff to it. Yay, I've won. That's all for me. For instance, you know, you got a farm. You've got your workers here. And um, then there's a manager slot. It doesn't fill the manager slot. You have to fill the manager slot. And you have to hire them to work as a manager. So there's that. And sometimes you get your dynasty. You get people who come in... Or suddenly the, the little voice will pop up and tell you, Oh, our dynasty has grown. What are we going to do with this one? And, you know, it's like you, you choose a name. You, it's a, you, you do the character creation screen all over again. Only it's one of your dynasty members. And you can either, when the next election pops up, you can run them for president. And you can sit back and not do anything. Or you can assign them to be a manager. There are no grade schools in five. I liked the idea of grade schools. It was good. But there's no grade schools in five. But there is a library that does research so that you can speed up your... They give you research points so you can research technologies ahead of time. We have two years remaining. Woo! But they've got that. And it's just... Again, this is about as close up as you can get in the game. I don't even think... Actually, I don't even think you get this close up in Tropico 5. And, um... All of the mines are caves. You'll see a ridge of rock... There's no ridge of rock here. Nowhere. It's just an upthrust bit of land. So you've got ridges of rocks, and in the ridges of rocks, you'll see caves. And they'll have, like, different decorating, natural occurring things around the rocks so you know what kind of mine it's going to be. And you get, you get a coal mine which makes it easier to run your own um, electric plant. You get coal, you get iron, you get bauxite, you get gold, you get uranium. And you get oil, but if you've got a place to put an oil drill, it will actually be a little spot on the ground with a little black geyser coming out of it. Which, in reality, you would soon have a big pool of black ick on the ground, but yeah, okay, whatever. So, I mean, they, they, they complicate some things. They dumb down some other things. It's like... I mean, let's face it. In actuality, strip mining is what you do. You see, a lot of times, gold usually isn't strip mined. You, um... Although what they do is similar to it. Usually gold and silver you usually find in veins. But sometimes the veins are on the surface and when that happens you do a, a type of strip mining for it. Coal is 
coal is usually in... Well, all of these minerals are in veins. What they call veins. Layers of... But, you know, sometimes you strip mine them. But once you get too deep, that turns into a pit mine anyway. But, trust me, I am not the expert on mining. Um, my father-in-law and his brothers worked the coal mines in southern Illinois. My father-in-law and his brothers are all dead now. I do. Their sister is the only one still around, I think, so it's... <laughs> But then again, you know, I'm almost 60, so what does that tell you about things? All right, so the airport, is it done yet? Yes, it's done. Okay, this is, okay, so this is the smaller plane, I guess. Because apart from that plane, you get what? My memory keeps wanting to tell me is a Lockheed Tristar or something very similar. A constellation. It's the constellation, I think. The constellation had a very, uh, a rather distinct tail structure. So, I'll tell you what, beforehand they were just coming in in droves. Are we on the last year yet? No! We still have, well, one more year to go after this. So, that's exciting. And things seem to be going faster. Um, let's see, what haven't I talked about yet? Ah, oh, yes, the, the next series. I think for the next series, I'm going to go back to Tropico 4. Because there's this one island on Tropico 4 that I really like. It is a big island. I mean, it is a very big island. I mean, here, this island gives you, you know, the different townships, for want of a better word. You've got Palos, you've got, uh, where is it, Cardenas, you've got Juventud up here, and you've got El Venado down here. So you've got these different, but I mean, basically it's just one bit, it's one big island, so to speak. The island we're going to be doing in, in the next version of Tropico 4 is huge compared to this. I mean, it is, it's just huge. And it's got a uh, volcano on it, but the volcano is like, it's like, there's like a sort of like a crescent-shaped island surrounding a more circular island with the uh, volcano on it. And it's just kind of connected. There's a strip of water that kind of forms a crescent of the big island. So, uh, there's my score. How exciting. 12 months. But like I said, it's huge. It's got a volcano, but you couldn't. But the only important things. Yes, yes, I have a year and then I have to reach the retirement age. The only resources that are located within the uh, um, danger of the volcano is a couple of salt mines. Well, they are your only salt mines, but, you know. What can you do? Um, but otherwise, you can. I mean, this island's so huge, I usually build it with two docks. One at either end of the island, just to keep stuff going in and out. It really is. There's just. It's huge. So, we'll be able to do a lot of stuff on this island. So. It's Northern Exposure. <laughs> but we're going to do that island next. So it'll be back to our friend Helena Bucket. And we will... It's like... 
Pachanga Volcana or Volcana Pachanga or something like that. It's got Volcane. It's got part of Volcano as the name, so you know what it is. I don't know. I suppose if I spoke Spanish, I'd know exactly what it was. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. It's like I can count in Spanish a little bit, but other than counting, I know more Japanese and Korean than I know of Spanish. Although, to be honest, it's kind of easier to decipher Spanish than it is Japanese or Korean simply because Spanish, Italian are extremely similar, French isn't all that different, and while well, English is more different than the others, you know, when they all have the same roots, it's easier to at least pretend to figure out what they say. Um, Gozimus. Huh? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's no way to... Well, of course, adios. But there are other single words that sometimes make more sense. Oh, well, I know. I was just rambling on. It just occurred to me that I didn't reset this. Yep. Oh, well. All of that money that could have went to my secret stash did not go to my secret stash. And, oh, this isn't even started. Well, it's not going to even pretend to get finished. Because there's all these... Yeah, it's, it's not going to go. I should have thought about the, that at the beginning of the episode. But I didn't. But at least I did get the uh, new apartment built, so... Okay, so... Okay, this is a different person. How old is she? She's 13. Makes sense. And this one? This is... 14 year old. So the two boys that were there have already gotten jobs and have moved off. Sorry. Yeah, well, it's like... Yeah, I got three months. You're not getting a cathedral. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, and this one's going to be a little trickier to edit because uh, what you're looking at now is 1024 by 1280, I think. Yeah. And um, I, I, this is okay. I, I take the footage that's coming here and I crop off because uh, even though that see I'm looking at this at full 1920 by 1080 but everything is stretched wide the record OBS is recording it at 1280 by 1024 so it's recording the more square and it's adding black bars at the side and the bottom to fill it in to make it fit 1920 by 1080. So I have to trim those off and then I feed that into my video editing software and everything's fine and dandy. And as we're approaching the end, I'll go ahead and say thanks for watching and you don't really care about how I'm going to edit this anyway, so who cares? <laughs> But like I said, you may hear a repeat of the music, by the way. But again, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. There will be more stuff. Like I said, we're going to go back to Tropical 4 next. Um, there's all the Fallout stuff. So, ah, here we go. 485 points. Wow. How about that? So I made it through good times and bad. I've managed to cling to power for 30 years. Now is the time to say adios. Presidente, the people have come to show you their love and respect. The leader of Tropico and a true friend of the people. You are surely the kind of leader that Vladimir Lenin himself will be proud to call friend. Comrade Presidente, the Communist Party has thrived under your steady hand. 
However, though most of the people respect you, some of the men of cloth have been less kind to you. Ah, let them stay in their churches. You rule in the streets. The farmers, miners, and loggers of Tropico note that you stood with them in the fields and forests to make their efforts the true economic strength of the island. Fortunately, the shrewd president that you are, you've managed to make a sizable nest egg for your retirement and stashed a fortune in your Swiss bank account. Viva Presidente! You've managed to thread lightly and achieve a reasonable degree of overall happiness for your people. While you may have lacked in luster in some areas, you sparkled like a diamond in others. Yeah. Yeah, there, see, my first game I scored 15 points higher. And, weirdly enough, there was no mention of Vladimir Lenin in in this playthrough here. <laughs> and it pointed out that I was the big tourist destination. So, I, I don't know. It's all kind of weird. But here we are. See, since I had to replay the last episode, my score went down. Darn. Oh well. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Stick around for Tropical 4's return. Maybe go visit the Fallout stuff. Maybe. Anyways, like I said, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in a little bit. Adios.